There we go. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> but, um... Hold on. Sorry. I'm just trying to... I, I was just watching this video. About the sky making a response video to Star Wars Theory. I, I restarted I got like maybe a quarter, maybe a halfway through. And uh, I was like, I, I, I should probably make a video and uh, give him my little bit of two cents. Not for the guy that's talking, but for like another guy. So, uh, let's... Uh, Well, he's got the hat on, he's got the shades, he's got the black shirt. I mean, you see how I'm, how I'm dressed here. And I'm in pajama pants, alright? So, and, it, so this guy, he's trying, he's trying to make, he's trying to make a name for himself. Darth Breboy? I guess 956 subscribe if you want to him. I don't I don't care because he go bigger but um yeah so this is a video response to Star Wars theory um this is okay. a video where it came up in my notifications because I'm still subscribed the Star Wars theory because I like when he posts a fan fiction. If he's done that recently, I can't remember the last fan. Okay, so really liking this fan fiction. Star Wars theory ego is insane, and so is his gatekeeping mindset rant. I personally don't think the Star Wars theory gatekeeps anything. I think it makes some valid points on the direction of Star Wars and what Star Wars should be to uh, what George Lucas uh, wrote to begin with and uh, well, in the direction that it's going, which people want to change it, but oh well. That guy brought up or did. It's mostly just been bitching about the direction of the franchise. Um, I can agree. Thumbnails with Star Wars Theory. They've got such a fucking clickbaity nature to it that's meant to stir up outrage that I can't watch it. I look at the thumbnail and I go, I don't want to waste my time with this fucking video. And this was another example of it where uh, Star Wars Theory... Uh, well, it wasn't directly asked of, of him, but uh, someone on Twitter said that. My beard like that? Hey, did Star Wars Theory what? get a permission to use. Uh, Mine's less necky. And Mark Hamill went, saying. No. That's all Mark Hamill said. He didn't elaborate. He didn't say, Fuck you, Star Wars Theory. I'm going to sue you. Or whatever. No, he just said no. The guy didn't get permission to use my likeness. And instead of Star Wars Theory, in my opinion, doing the honorable thing, reaching out to Mark Hamill, or trying to reach out saying, my apologies, sir. May I show you what I'm doing? And you be the judge if you want to be in it. If not, I will get an actor to play you. I think that's a fair thing to do. Look, I've been in situations where... I've made, uh, if you don't know this, I make giantess collages. And there are models who I've used who may not like my work or didn't like that I didn't ask them. So I've kind of had to go, okay, look, this is for your eyes only. I haven't posted it. I just made this. And I'm sending it to you directly. If you have a problem with something not being a certain way, I can edit it real easy to make it satisfactory for you because if I don't have your consent or your permission then I'm not going to release this 
And Thor's theory goes into kind of a rant about, well, I got permission from Lucasfilm to do my fan film, yada, yada, yada. And then he goes into this whole Which spiel of this martyrism of being a Star Wars fan in the 2000s and late and 90s and shit. And going, oh, it was a secret thing. Maybe it's because I was He's a taking kid it. and I grew up, you know, well, out of context. Kind of shit and I uh, was kind of. I don't think I was really an outcast. I think I got along with basically everybody I met most of the time. But people like Star Wars. People talk about fucking Star Wars. They did it usually. Okay, we're back when we were kids now. Kind of more popular, which made sense. Oh yeah, uh, Harry Potter they were making movies, movies all out, all throughout. Compared to Star Wars, Star Wars had two, technically three movies come out in the 2000s, whereas fucking Harry Potter was like, like an explosion, and you had Twilight. And... So Star Wars got overshadowed. I'm telling you, my was kind of last like a fan 15 years, maybe. Did Star Wars get overshadowed Pretty after Revenge of the Sith? Oh, yeah. It was just for TV. So you would go on Cartoon Network every Friday. You'd watch some episodes of The Clone Wars. But then, in this video, Star Wars Theory says something that really pissed me off. And I'll tell you why it fucking pissed me off. And I, I think I might unsub after this. Maybe he's done this. Okay, I, I, I wanted to add just one thing. Let's... I was listening to this, um, this guy who's doing corn in public. Star Wars theory. The guy's not going to care if you unsub, buddy. Like th this, I mean, it it's like Walmart. Bro, I'm not shopping at Walmart. Okay, you can shop somewhere else. Nobody, he's not going to care. And I just didn't notice it or didn't want to notice it. Because I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. If I like somebody and I have fond memories of them and their work has brought me a lot of joy, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. It's Even really hard for me to follow day, along with this guy. So when Star Wars Theory says this dumb shit. When I was a kid in the 90s and 2000s, we're not talking about these new age Star Wars fans that Disney has amassed. It wasn't really all that cool to be talking about Star Wars all the time. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. I can tell you, because I was there. If you were talking about Star Wars at school or, I mean, outside of a friend group, you were, you were pushed aside as an outcast. That's just how things were. It was more of like a hush hush secret thing. I but only say amongst secret, but... your friends and nerds and geeks, real geeks. Like now I, now you have like e girls being like, I'm such a nerd, I'm such a geek. It's like, no, you're an opportunist. I feel the need to re And what he's meaning by that is people jumping on bandwagons to gain an audience, to gain followers and gain clicks. I mean, yeah, you could you could jump into a fan base that way, but it's not talking about like the real fans that were that were raised up through it. Okay, yeah, maybe you might had a boyfriend that was like, Hey, uh, hey babe, let's watch Star Wars and then you got into Star Wars and then you started loving it. That's a little bit different. But when you're just uh like an e girl and You've never had any anything like in Star Wars before. And you're like, well, oh, I'm just going to jump on it. I'm going to get some nerd followers. That's what he's talking about. Then, yeah, he he's taking it way too much out of context. Respond. Who the fuck are you to deem who the fuck is a real fan and who's just a pretend fan? If you like Star Wars, you like Star Wars. Oh, yes, but... It doesn't matter what the fuck got you into it. Oh, 
You loved Ray's arc. You liked Ray. Yeah, but when you only get into and jump on a bandwagon to fuel an online business such as followers and, and clickbaiting, then yes, in my opinion, it is. And you've had nothing else to do with the franchise since before that. Yes. Yes, you are. Ray is a character. Ray was your main character that got you into the franchise. Great. Welcome He's to the not fan. saying that. You're a fan. You like the series. You watch the movies. You're in. It doesn't matter if they were born in the 2000s, late 90s, or what. If they liked Star Wars or any part of Star Wars, and it made them feel something, this sense of hopefulness and optimism and wanting to be a better person and just overall become a better human being. That's all that matters. So when I listen to Star Wars Theory say that condescending shit, I get pissed. Like, let me okay, turn the tables here. Okay, Star Wars Theory. When I gave you that super chat as one hardcore fan to another, and I asked you about the Despecialized Edition, you had no fucking idea what that project was. I was wondering what your thoughts on Is there a reason we're just standing Army's here? Despecialized Editions are, and what are your thoughts on changes to George made to VOT? What's Harmy's de Despecialized Editions? The changes George made to the OT, I mean, he has every right to make changes to his movies. Federation George. George. You must be getting closer to the heart of the sub forces. You had no awareness of it. So can I therefore gatekeep you and say... He's not gatekeeping anybody. You... Oh, man. Just... For one, learn how to fucking speak without... <laughs> oh, my gosh. He's not gatekeeping. All he's saying, like, and I'm saying once again, if you're just jumping on a bandwagon just to gain the the followers, and you've had no, like, real personal history in liking Star Wars before, and say you're just only you're only going out and buying a seven hundred, eight hundred, two thousand dollar lightsaber just to show your followers. Oh look, I like Star Wars too, and then you get a whole bunch of clicks for it and do some dances on TikTok with it. And that's the only little bit of Star Wars that you like. Then yes, I I mean, yeah. Or if you jump on a bandwagon and saying, Oh yeah, I like Star Wars, I'm a Star Wars fan and you do a cosplay. And, like, this is, like, the only time that you've ever done anything Star Wars, you've ever acknowledged anything Star Wars, then, yes, you you are. He's not saying if you don't know um, stuff about certain things, maybe it just didn't cross his mind. Maybe he hadn't looked into it. But the dude has basically grown a business talking about Star Wars. I respect his opinions and, and and what Star Wars theory has to say. This guy, oh my gosh, is is taking everything way too way way too far out of context. Oh, Star Wars theory doesn't know shit about the specialized edition. He's not a real fan because a real fan would give a shit about the changes George Lucas made from '97 to. 2019. Never want to get real technical because of the McClunky cut in uh, New Hope. So okay. Okay. Yeah. And the special edition changes. So he's talking about the... Um, so mainly what you are referring to are 4, 5, and 6. A New Hope Empire. And... Uh, return being changed special effects wise yes George Lucas has and he has talked about it and even on these special edition vi um, DVDs you can also watch the unedited 
the unchanged versions of the movies to how they were back in the 70s um, to the 90s. So, or the 80s. Excuse me. Can I therefore gatekeep you? Can I gatekeep anybody that I know? <laughs> no awareness of the despecialized edition to Star Wars. I could, but I would be a fucking asshole. You can't get more fame. Okay. And, yes, in the Star Wars theory, he can massively state his opinion. There's going to be tons of people that agree. There's going to be tons of people that disagree. And he's going to make money doing it. Every video is a is a business thing that he puts out. And and yes, he's also a Star Wars fan. He's made a living at it. So, it, coming in with, I mean, I've got less than this guy now because I don't do anything on YouTube anymore. But coming in with a 900 subscriber count channel attacking a 3.3 million this is jumping on a bandwagon to try and get clout and take a shot at the big guy when he's just going to look at you and say I don't even know who you are and the next day he's going to keep on going like <laughs> drop the sunglasses and and just be cool buddy and then going to a convention and seeing someone dress up as a character they love. So when I went to Philly Comic Con, I met a lot of Anakin cosplayers. I met some, Anakin, met some female Anakin cosplayers, and their cosplays were great. They really nailed Anakin to a T. So are they fake fans? They look a little younger than me. Would you say they're fake fans? Or if I just bumped into some Star Wars fans at a... Uh... It's not saying because your age... That you're a fake fan. And this guy doesn't, like, does not understand. We just shot the shit about, you know, liking Kenobi or saying, I overall liked Kenobi minus one thing. Would I be gatekept because I liked the Disney era of Star Wars where I mostly liked No. Like did minus a few projects. Am I not a real fan? Because I have very understandable grievances with George Lucas and how he handled the original trilogy. How? Am I not a real fan? Because I hey, have explain how. Grievances due to how much he changed the movies and refused to create a satisfactory version of those films officially. You see kind of this vicious cycle of gatekeeping and how stupid and petty it is? Which, by the way, when Mark Hamill didn't even give you shit, he just said, no, this guy didn't have permission to use my likeness. And you turned it into this whole spiel that was just bullshit. Like, it really was. I listened to that whole fucking thing. And you start going into gatekeepy bullshit, start do you need to, like, fix whatever no that is reason. breaking? You made a solid fan film that I liked. It was a fan film, though. It's not considered old canon, and it's not considered new canon. It's your canon. Like, example of fan canon. If I say... Hence, fan film. I, I, I don't know what direction this guy's taking it, honestly. If I wanted to do a crossover of Doctor Who and... Star Wars, um, is that canon? No, it's fan fiction. So what you did is high budget fan fiction. So I guess here's another thing to piss. Yes, but he he didn't want to get in trouble using somebody's likeness. And oh man, it, yeah. this guy is taking it way the way out of context. Sexism and condescension in his voice. It offended me. It pissed me off. So I want to fucking. Give you this bit of knowledge about my life. Which parent do you think it was that got me into Star Wars? And Star Trek? And science fiction in general? Which parent do you think it was? Was it my mom or was it my dad? Probably your mom. Was my mom. So was mine. Mine got me into Star Wars. Dad. My mom. I, I can't. I can't 
do it with sunglasses, man. Like, come on. Was someone who grew up with the original Star Trek series. Grew up seeing the original Star Wars movies in the theater. Saw TNG when it was on air. Is a hardcore Trekkie. Is a pretty hardcore Star Wars fan. We saw a bunch of the movies in the theater when they came out, especially during the Disney era. They were important bonding things for us. So, when I hear Star Wars theory mock the idea of a woman loving Star Wars or being really into Star Wars, that really fucking pissed Do I need to explain, like, once again, on what he was meaning? It's not because he was a woman. It's some of these, some of these new age people that are coming in and are like, oh, yeah, I really like Star Wars. Oh, really? What's your favorite movie? Well, I haven't seen anything, anything Star Wars, but uh, I own... A lightsaber. Okay, why why'd you buy a lightsaber? Oh, because uh, I just uh, wanted uh, my followers, or I wanted more likes and, and more followers on TikTok or whatever. In my opinion, there, yes, that is that is the fake fan. Not because not because of the gender. That's not what he's saying. Or oh yeah, I'm such a geek. Okay. What are what are you a geek about? What are some geeky things you're a geek about? Oh well, nothing. I'm I'm just being quirky. Okay, well then no, you're not. So sunglasses here is taking it completely out of context. Star Wars is not a gendered fandom. It's not. Star Wars has protagonists of all races and creeds. That's a beautiful thing about it. Also, I'm just sick of this dumbass point, and I really, I'm just too much of a nerd not to bitch about it, not to rant about it, so I'm going to rant about it. When I hear these types of schmucks go, Star Wars was never political? Are you dumb? No, really, are you stupid? How the fuck can you watch the prequel trilogy, how the fuck can you watch the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy? in chronological order, watch all of those movies and go, not political. How can you watch The Clone Wars and go, not political? How? How? Okay, here's an important clip. What, what political agenda does it pertain to? It's the most political clip in the entire saga. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Now, why? Is that clip of Anakin Skywalker going, if you are not with me, then you are my enemy. That movie was in production during the early 2000s. What major historical events were happening in the early 2000s? Enlighten me. We had 9-11. Bush signed the Patriot Act, i.e. starting the surveillance state that we currently live in today. And in 03, him declaring war in Iraq. Let's look at what Bush said in that fucking speech. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us. But the point still stands. Them. No, that you can't you can't backtrack on yourself there, the buddy. Let's play that with Anakin. Not with me, then you're my enemy. So, did, did he Fucking say that speech completely? Every nation in every region now has a decision to make either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Let's play that with Dan. Okay, George Lucas is not. <laughs> uh... This guy. Thank you. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. It's playing back to back again. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. Again. 
Fuck it, editing me. Let's intersplice that shit for the hell of it. If you're not with me, you're with the enemy. Now, was George Lucas really trying to suggest that the current administration, when those movies were new, was being rather authoritarian and was going in a direction of no. an evil type of governing philosophy? that we probably couldn't get out of? Was George Lucas perhaps trying to warn the public through Attack of the Clones and through Revenge of the Sith the dangers that our country was heading towards? No. How about we go back to the early drafts of Star Wars where prior to the Emperor being the Sith Lord he was just a corrupt politician. Yeah. And who was the most corrupt politician of the era when Star Wars was written. Richard Nixon. The Emperor was originally a allegory for Richard Nixon and the corruption of a government that wants to hide things from its people. You want to go even further? This is especially true with Return of the Jedi. Okay, if you want to take clips from movies and intersplice it to uh... <laughs> real life a person is smart but people are stupid you can tell one person hey this is uh this is what we're working on you tell the mass majority of people they'd flip out now what movie is that is it pertaining to the now government? Maybe, maybe not. I doubt it was. But you guys figure it out. This is from the horse's mouth if you look into it. Lucas based the Rebel Alliance and mainly the Ewoks all over the Viet Cong fighting the U.S. So is that not political? How about all the... There are some similarities, but no. Various historical references to history and politics that are in the original trilogy. How about the colors of the empire? Red, white, and black. The colors of the Nazi flag. How about Darth Vader's helmet? Shaped similarly to a Nazi war helmet in the Second World War. These are not accidents. Star Wars is very, very, very fucking political. And when George Lucas was writing that shit, it was more fucking political than anything Disney Touched. All Disney did was just, well, not even Disney. Because the most political film in the, the sequel trilogy is The Last Jedi. And all that movie did was slavery bad. Child labor bad. Elites using slave labor is bad. Which, slavery was already a topic talked about in the prequel era, so it was just expanding on what Lucas did. Basically, I'm starting to be done with... Okay, let's just reverse back to where we started at. Gatekeeping. This guy goes on, on a ramp, goes to a completely different direction, <laughs> and... This might be the last draw for me. I'm just done. I've watched this guy since 2016. He was a comfort channel when I was going through some hard shit back in 2016. Unsubscribe. He's not going to care. But I think, unfortunately, he's shown his true colors time and time again. And those true colors disturb me. And I really wish he would stop acting like he didn't have a large influence. Because he does. He is one of the largest Star Wars channels. The largest. On YouTube and on social media. And I'm very disappointed that he yeah, seems to multiple forgotten. channels. One too. of the best things about being a Star Wars fan. What George Lucas really wanted to focus on when he made the saga. It was about being an empathetic and kind person to your fellow man. And to not judge others. That's what Lucas was trying to show. That's what Lucas's idea of a perfect Jedi was, someone who is kind, compassionate, someone who sees through the flaws of others. 
because perhaps there is goodness underneath. That is a Jedi. Three, two, one. Not an asshole who gatekeeps other people for no reason. Not someone who gatekeeps an entire sex for no reason. He's you're t way out and of context to again. Star Wars video like this, but live long and prosper. Thanks for watching this video. Did you just live long and prosper on a Star Wars? You're excommunicated right there. You are no longer a Star Wars fan. May the Force be with you, everyone. That's how you send off. You don't say live long and prosper on a Star Wars video. What a cuck. Let me tell you. Like, you, you are no Star Wars fan. Hopefully I won't get too much hate for this. Hopefully I won't get too much hate for this. For taking things way out of context and not know what I'm talking about. You're welcome.